السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعما نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الهدى قالت التقى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد ثم أوحينا إليك أن نتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصبر عند الصدمة الأولى وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله له خير إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خير الله وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خير الله أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters and those listening at home As we approach the end of Dhul Qada once again We remind ourselves as we did last week With regards to the legacy and the life of Ibrahim ala nabiyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam As we approach the season of Hajj It is no coincidence that in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Ittabi' millata Ibrahim hanifa that follow upon the footsteps and follow upon the millah and the religion of your father Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. This man was a man who was a complete embodiment and example of what it means to be a complete servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it's no coincidence that the best of creations, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was also instructed to follow the ways of Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. So when we look in the, in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, there's one aspect we want to share today. That is that of sabr and patience. I quoted two hadith of Nabi, uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam where he says, as sabr in the sadmatil ula. Patience is, in, a, in essence, truly patience is that which is exercised when the difficulty and the pain first hits an individual. Patience is not that a person's relative passes away and a month, two months, three months, a year, two years later, now this person says, okay, I'm going to be patient over this now. No, patience rather would be when this person is first informed of his or her relative passing, then this person exercises patience at that time and shows sabr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the wisdom, this was the decree of Allah ta'ala, and I will be content upon that. This would be sabr. So we see that this narration, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, actually mentioned this statement, as sabru inda sadmatil ula, with this very same example. There was a female sahabiya radiyallahu anha who was mourning the, the, the loss of her child. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam happened to pass by, and he consoled her from behind. She wasn't aware of who he was. And he consoled her by saying, you know, uh, oh my sister, be patient. And this sahabiya radiyallahu anha, not recognizing who this individual was that was addressing her, said, how would you know my pain? I am in this situation, you wouldn't know what I'm going through. Somebody then said to her, do you know who you were speaking to? Do you know who you were addressing? That was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She then realized, went to uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and apologized and explained her situation. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam at that moment said to her, as sabr inda sadbatil ula. Verily patience is that when it's exercised at the very beginning stages. Then Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam also made another statement. And I want to relate this with the life of Ibrahim ala Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and the lives we are living today. Everybody is going through some sort of struggle in life. Everybody has difficulties, everybody has problems, everybody has some hurdles in their way, and everybody has uh, some sort of pain in them. But this isn't nothing, this isn't anything new. This isn't anything new. Every individual that stepped foot in this dunya, in this world, was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So normally when we speak of sabr and patience, what do we think? We think patience upon difficulties, upon disasters, upon tragedies, which is one aspect. However, there are another two categories of sabr and patience. From amongst those two, I want to highlight one. And that is, the, the other two are sabr anil ma'asiyah. A person desires to sin, a person desires to do evil. They have this human desire. However, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden this for me. Hence, this person exercises patience and stays away from it, refrains from it. Number three, the third category. So the first one will be patience upon difficulties and, and, and calamities and, and, and uh, sadness in our lives. Number two, uh, patience upon disobedience 
uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, which I want to highlight today, which is sabr ala al-ita'a. Ala ta'a. Which is a person exercises patience upon the obedience of Allah ta'ala. Upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times, we are instructed to do things. We are obliged to do things in sharia, in deen. However, the situation we are in forces us or demands from us that we do otherwise. That we do otherwise. And now, this situation boils down to this individual. When this, will this individual be patient upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed, has ordered? Or will the pressure of the community, of the people, of the relatives, of the family, overpower this individual and force this individual to make deci decisions which are con contrary to the command of Allah Ta'ala. So we look at the life of Ibrahim Ala Nabi Nawa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Very quickly, we'll just, we'll just, just highlight, very quickly. Ibrahim Ala Alayhi Salatu Wasalam grew in a house. The father, the, the, the leader of the household was a man who made idols. Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam being a messenger of Allah had to deal with his own family first. Rejection from his own family first. The father said, Leave. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, Salamun alaykum. Salamun alayk, sa'astaghfiru laka rabbi. If that is the case, Salamun alaykum, I will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very first thing that this, that this great messenger of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, had to deal with was the pressure from his own house. How many times, let us reflect, how many times are we put in situations? where we have to make a decision whether it is the obedience of Allah Ta'ala or whether it's pleasing our wives. Whether it's the obedience of Allah Ta'ala or pleasing our parents. Whether it's the obedience of Allah Ta'ala or pleasing our children. Or whether it's obeying Allah Ta'ala or pleasing ourselves. How many times, yani every, every one of us, like I said in the beginning, every one of us has our own problems, has our own situations. We can all look into our own self and, and analyze how do we fit in with this example of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam where in his own household he had this pressure of abandoning what he was doing, going away from the message of Allah Ta'ala in order to, to, to oblige and to be in line with the instructions of his father. But what was the step of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam? Salamun alaykum. Salamu alaykum. Sorry, I have to leave. Then comes the community. Then comes the community. When he reached out to the community, we know the whole incident, the, 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 the fire was made, uh, and, and the message of Ibrahim was, was, was rejected, he was tested, he was tried, he had to leave the country, he had to flee the country. Everything happened, the pressure of the community, the, the, the pressure of the society, to the extent that the pressure of the king of the time, the leader and the king of the time, Yet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam remained patient, steadfast upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered, and he passed this test as well. Exact same scenarios can be found in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Preach to his family first, this was the command of Allah ta'ala. Preach to your family first, his tribe, his clan, Quraysh, then the people of Makkah, then the people of Arabia, one by one, one by one, there were challenges, there were challenges. However, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam stood firm, patient upon the decree of Allah Ta'ala, the order of Allah Ta'ala, and continued with his mission. My brothers and sisters, this lesson I want to share today from the life of Ibrahim ala Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is there will be struggles, there will be pressure, and there will be, there will be times where we will be made to make, we'll be forced to make a decision. That decision will be between you and Allah Ta'ala. That وَإِذِ بِتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتِ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Allah Ta'ala wanted to test Ibrahim ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wasalam with certain tests. One of them, the greatest being the, that one of udhiyah and slaughtering the son. Allah Ta'ala had no desire. Allah Ta'ala had no desire for the blood of Ismail. What was Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala going to do with the blood of Ismail? Allah Ta'ala had no desire. However, the test was, Ibrahim, you have a son at an old age of 80 plus. You finally, I finally given you a son. The son has now grown up to be a healthy young boy who can walk with you, who can talk with you, who can do work with you. And now he's spending time together. Is your attachment with your son more or is your attachment with your creator more? This is what I want to see. This was a test. This was a test of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. This was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, we will have tests in our lives. We will go through these, these, these situations. 
It is up to you and I that we exercise this patience as well, this form of patience, where we are patient upon the obedience of Allah Ta'ala and feel contentment in our hearts that this is the right thing to do. And by making the right choices, inshallah, we will see fruits in our life. May Allah SWT give us a tawfiq.